Who is this guy? That happens all the time. Guy? Don't tell Tim Cook. That Who is this guy? all the time. Oh, man, I'm, I'm embarrassed here. Look at that. God, oh, my just God. Like you we feel like you know somebody and then this happens. All right. All right, come on. All right, people. All right. Kids today. Hey. One of those that that'll work. Thanks. One of those. We're not going to rehash what we talked about on the panel last week. We debated global warming. Two of the people did not believe in it. Oh no, one person didn't believe it. Two of them didn't believe in evolution. Uh, you know, the good thing about science is that it's true whether or not you believe in it. You see, that's the. <laughs> it's one of the things I love about science. We don't have to pretend we have all the answers. Fuck the police coming straight from the underground. A young nigga got it back because I'm brown. The earth looks flat because, one, you're not far enough away at your size. Two, your, your size isn't large enough relative to earth to notice any curvature at all. Because yeah. it's heat, it's picante, mm -hmm. is very... I think you must realize that some people are going to go to your show at the planetarium and they're going to say, aha, those scientists have discovered God because God, dark matter, is what holds this universe together. It feels good to be a gangster. We all watched this show when we were kids with Carl Sagan. What is it like to step into his turtleneck? What is... <laughs> you, you get to say the world is flat because we live in a country that guarantees your free speech, but it's not a country that guarantees that anything you say is correct. <laughs> you ask him if he had a, a rap name, you'd ask me if I had a, a rap name. <laughs> Neil, you have a rap name? Yeah, MC Squared. X go give it to you. Fuck wait for you to get it on your own. X go deliver to you. Knock knock, open up the door to spread off with the non-stop pop out the stainless steel. How about you are about to be executed? Oh, I'm about to be executed. You have nothing except your knowledge and your your knowledge of science, your experience. I would request that my body in death be buried, not cremated, so that the energy content contained within it gets returned to the earth so that flora and fauna can dine upon it just as I have dined upon flora and fauna throughout my life. try to stump you. I've learned better than that, believe it or not. No, I love being stumped. But when's the last time you got stumped? Seriously. Because as long as I've known you, no. I have never seen you go like this. Oh, that's a good one. <laughs> never. No, your real question is, when's the last time I was stumped by you? <laughs> oh, you son of a <laughs> get out of here. So why didn't I flinch? Because the laws of science differ fundamentally from those of the history of everybody doing big projects and it's never driven by exploration it's never driven by science it's never driven by curiosity not if it's big and expensive it's driven by the fact that people don't want to die so there's a war driver it's also driven by the fact that people want to get wealthy so no, no, a money we have the large, the, the large hadron collider the large hadron the large collider do you do you know oh no no <laughs> It feels good to be a gangster. A real gangster ass nigga plays his cards right. A real gangster ass nigga never runs his fucking mouth because real gangster ass niggas don't start fights.
seat. Thank you so much. Oh my gosh. Um, it's called Star Talk. Is math related to science? <laughs> Most people who could be born will never be born, will never even exist. So the fact like that. Like sperm. <laughs> sure, yeah, yeah. Well, then it's science. The rest don't. But where do they go? They're dead. I had to invent integral and differential calculus to determine this. Then he turned 26. Then he turned 26. The guy's good. You know, this, like, you can't argue with Isaac Newton. And that becomes, you got a badass over here. I don't know how. We've got a badass over here. There was an incident in Pasadena, California. I was there. I don't drink much coffee. I don't have a relationship with caffeine. But every now and then, I'll be delighted to have a nice cup of hot cocoa. And I went to one of these coffee houses, you know, with the chalkboard out front. And so I had, you know the kind I'm talking about. They're all over Brooklyn. You trip on the chalkboards in Brooklyn. <laughs> so, <laughs> so I'm in there. I order hot chocolate. And I order it with whipped cream, of course, right? And it comes to the table, and there's no whipped cream. And I said, I ordered this with whipped cream. And they said, oh, we put it on. And I said, well, where is it? Oh, he said, it sunk to the bottom. <laughs> I then said, <laughs> either the laws of physics that apply everywhere in the universe are suspended in your coffee shop, <laughs> or you didn't put whipped cream on my hot cocoa. <laughs> and he looked indignant. Really? <laughs> now, to his credit, rather than continue to argue with me, he intended to prove me wrong. Whoa. So he went into the kitchen, brought out the, the whipped cream, scooped it up, popped it in my, in my hot cocoa, and it bobbed once and floated atop. And there it was. <laughs> did you of invite course whipped did cream? You invite no, of course, it. whipped cream has to float. <laughs> because, first of all, before it was whipped cream, it was cream, okay? <laughs> and old timers remember what does cream do in unhomogenized milk? It floats to the top. And you skim off the cream, leaving behind skim milk, okay? This is how that works. Now you take the heavy cream and then whip it, putting air into it. It is not going to sink on any known liquid devised by man. Okay? So. This is how science works. One researcher comes up with a result. And that is not the truth. No, no. A scientific emergent truth is not the result of any one experiment. What has to happen is somebody else has to verify it, preferably a competitor, preferably someone who doesn't want you to be correct, such as my waiter. <laughs> he went out to prove me wrong and got the same result that I had declared. We can call that the beginnings of an emergent truth about whipped cream. <laughs> now we need someone to do it in Asia and in Europe. And, 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 and then you get a trend, and you can then declare that a consensus of observation and experiments has emerged in the scientific community. Whipped cream floats on hot chocolate. <laughs> If I could ask you, if there was one thing you wanted people to remember that you could say about science, what would that be? That the universe is knowable and what one need not appeal to mystical, magical forces to account for things. Even if a day arises where something unfolds in front of your eyes that you cannot explain, just because you cannot explain it does not mean it is being driven by mystical, magical forces. 
It just means it's being driven by laws of physics that we know and you have yet to learn, or that we have all yet to discover. But the universe is knowable, and that's an amazing thing. It's knowable by our feeble human brain that rose up out of the, you know, the, the Serengeti, the, the plains of Africa, to rise up just to survive, to not get eaten, and we build a civilization where we have sufficient free time so that we can contemplate our place in the universe. Okay. But, you, but you can say something about the question which you really would wish to know the answer to. And, I mean, for, for me, it would be, what, what's consciousness? Oh, because yeah. because that's, that's totally baffling. That, Richard, you know what I think? I agree. Not that you ask, but what I think on this is, uh, consciousness has kind of baffled us for a while, okay? And evidence that we haven't a clue about what consciousness is, is drawn from the, in, from the fact of how many books are published on the topic, right? We're not really continuing to publish books, not really, on like Newtonian physics. It's done, all right? So, so the fact that people keep publishing books on consciousness is the evidence we don't know anything about it, because if we knew all about it, you wouldn't have to keep publishing. <laughs> so, so what I wonder, <laughs> what I wonder, Richard, is whether there really is no such thing as consciousness at all, and that there's some other understanding of the functioning of the human brain that renders that question obsolete. That's unknowable majesty of space, that the greatest possible distance we can conceive, the outer limits of our imagination, is just the beginning.